In 1969, humans landed on the moon, two of them, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. But Apollo 11 was a mission of three. What happened to the other guy? Howdy, Lunar Landers. This is DNews, and I'm Trace with a special video from our friends at Seeker Stories about the pilot of the command module of Apollo 11. If you're unfamiliar, each of the Apollo missions used the same configuration. A Saturn V launched three men inside a command module into orbit. They pulled a fragile craft called the LEM, or Lunar Module, out of the spent rocket, then shot off on a three-day trip to the moon. In Apollo 11, when they got there, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong hopped into the LEM to go to the surface, leaving Michael Collins, a third astronaut, all alone. And here's his story. This image was taken out of the window of the Apollo 11 command module, Columbia, on July 21st, 1969. With Earth in the far background, the famed lunar module carrying astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin returned to the Columbia after the pair became the first people to ever walk on the moon. But there's another story here about something not in this image. Within this photo is every person alive on July 21st, 1969. All the billions of people on Earth, plus the two in there. It shows the entirety of the human race. Well, except for one, the man who took this photo, Michael Collins. Which seems fitting for a man who has been dubbed the loneliest man in the universe. After the lunar module left for its famous descent, Command Module pilot Michael Collins was left by himself orbiting the moon. And not for an insignificant amount of time. I'm sure everyone's familiar with Neil Armstrong's first steps and famous words. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But those were mere seconds of the 21 hours the duo spent on the moon. And to make matters worse, for a portion of Collins' moon orbit, his radio was completely cut off from both Earth and his fellow astronauts. For approximately 48 minutes every trip around the moon, Collins was the most isolated man in human history. More than 200,000 miles from Earth, with no way of knowing what was happening, no one to talk to, no one to listen to. His work was the only thing he could do, and he tried to stay busy enough to keep away those bad thoughts that creep into one's head during solitude. My concerns uh, were not within the command module, but simply that something might go wrong with the uh, lamb, with the lunar module, and these two guys might get stuck on the surface of the moon. That was my, my main concern. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! The idea that he would be the only person to come home from a three-person crew was a real possibility, and one that he was both prepared for and terrified of. Orders were in place that if something should happen to the lunar module, if it could not return to the Columbia, Collins would return home alone. President Nixon would make an announcement giving the message to the entire world, as well as the two stranded astronauts who would be taking their last breaths on the surface of the moon. The speech, which was actually written in case of disaster, was not sugarcoated. It began, quote, Fate is ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But, as we know, that didn't happen. The Eagle landed and returned, giant leaps were taken, and Houston had no problem. Michael Collins' worst fears did not come true, and all three landed back on Earth safely. But while both the first and second man to step on the moon became household names, Michael Collins didn't. He became the forgotten astronaut which he later expressed in numerous interviews in his own book, was all right with him. Because he knew that even though his boots never touched alien soil, he'd played an integral part of man's journey forward. He was happy with the job he'd done. He didn't want to be a celebrity, and he didn't feel he was a hero. He was satisfied being an astronaut and the pilot of the successful Apollo 11 mission. Michael Collins retired from NASA in 1970, but since flying to and around the moon, he's worked for the U.S. Department of State, directed the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and become an aerospace consultant. I actually saw him speak at the Smithsonian in 2010, and he may not be a household name, but Michael Collins is an amazing American hero, to be sure. When Armstrong and Aldrin blasted away from the moon, they left behind a lone American flag, among other tokens and equipment. What would that flag look like today, like 50 years later? I looked into it a couple of years ago on D News. You can watch that video here. 
These NASA engineers produced the lunar flag assembly, which looks like this. And it's essentially a set of interlocking vertical poles with an attached nylon flag. As the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, the engineers added a telescoping curtain rod-like horizontal pole at the top to hold the flag out. If you want to see more stories like this, be sure to check out and subscribe to our friends at Seeker Stories. Do you have a favorite astronaut? Look some up and let us know down in the comments. And make sure you subscribe so you get more D-News every day.